forests, lakes, and plains along the narrow sea lay the roots of what would become a monumental empire in the annals of Faerun's history. This region, initially a collective of modest fishing and farming villages known as the Alliance of Seventon, would lay the groundwork for an empire that spanned millennia. The villages of Fenwick, Gers, Gilan, Gustav, Morin, Nausif, and Janik, though humble in their beginnings, were poised for greatness. The turning point for these communities came with the arrival of the Eirlani elves. Observing the potential within these humans, the elves extended diplomatic ties and began to impart the art, a form of arcane magic previously unseen by human eyes. The Netherese, as they came to be known, displayed an unprecedented aptitude for this new power, embracing the art with an eagerness that bordered on reverence. This initial exchange marked the beginning of Netheril's transformation from a simple alliance of villages into a burgeoning empire of magic. Renamed Netheril, or Nether's Land, by Nether the Elder, the society underwent a radical shift. The very fabric of Netheril's culture was woven with magic. From the lowest commoner to the highest noble, all were touched by the art. Even the most mundane of tasks were suffused with spellwork, elevating the Netherese civilization to new heights. Those who excelled in the practice of magic rose to prominence, forming a burgeoning class of arcanists whose influence rivaled that of the nobility itself. The discovery of the Nether Scrolls within the ruins of Arivandar catalyzed Netheril's ascent into an age of wonders. These ancient artifacts provided insights into magic that far surpassed the teachings of the elves, propelling the Netherese arcanists into an era of unprecedented discovery. Among them was Congenio Iun, who in a feat of unmatched skill created the first Iun stone, setting the precedent for the wonders that were to follow. The Nether Age was a period of explosive growth and magical understanding. The Netherese arcanists, now armed with the knowledge from the scrolls, began to reshape the world around them. Their influence extended beyond the mere casting of spells as they ventured into the creation of quasi-magical items and the conceptualization of flying enclaves. This era saw the birth of Iulam, one of Netheril's most legendary arcanists, whose inventions and discoveries would forever change the landscape of Faerun. The ascendancy of the arcanists in Netheril marked a significant new era in the Empire's history, where the bounds of the art were pushed to unprecedented levels. This period was defined by the discovery of the Nether Scrolls within the ruins of Arivandar. These ancient texts, imbued with profound magical knowledge, became the cornerstone of Netheril's golden age of magic. The Nether Scrolls provided insights into arcane mysteries that far surpassed the teachings of the Eirlani Elves, catapulting the Netherese Arcanists into a new era of power and influence. Among these Arcanists, Yolam stands out as a figure of legendary status. His creation of the first Mythalar, a powerful magical device that could sustain floating cities, represents the zenith of Netheril's magical achievements. The era following the scroll's discovery saw Netheril flourish into a mageocracy, where the Arcanists, wielding immense power, rose to the apex of society. Their ability to harness the weave directly allowed for the creation of the flying cities starting with Jin Lanal, crafted by Yolam himself. As the influence of the Arcanists grew, so too did their ambitions. They ventured into uncharted territories of magic, crafting items of immense power, and exploring the mysteries of the universe. However, the power of the Arcanists was not without its perils. Their relentless pursuit of greater magical knowledge and control led them to undertake increasingly risky endeavors. The Mythalars, while enabling the prosperity and expansion of Netheril, also sowed the seeds of the Empire's eventual downfall. The Arcanist's attempts to retain godlike powers through the manipulation of the Weave would lead to catastrophic consequences, culminating in an event known as Karsus Folly. In the sprawling expanse of Netheril, a stark division existed between the realms of high and low, painting a vivid picture of a society bifurcated by the access and control of arcane power. This separation was not merely geographical, but deeply ingrained in their social structure, fundamentally influencing 
the daily lives, opportunities, and destinies of its people. High Netheril, suspended in grandeur, miles above the earth in their floating cities, was the realm of the nobility, where arcanists and their kin dwelled. These enclaves, marvels of magical ingenuity powered by the Mithalars, became sanctuaries for the pursuit of higher arcane knowledge isolated from the perils of the terrestrial world. The inhabitants of these skyborne cities lived in a society where magic was as ubiquitous as air, speaking Loros, a language as refined and intricate as their high culture. Contrastingly, low Netheril sprawled across the lands below, its people tethered to the soil of the narrow sea's coast. Here resided the commoners, artisans, and lesser mages, whose lives were far removed from the lofty concerns of their counterparts above. Bound by the limitations of terrestrial existence, they forged a diverse society shadowed by the towering achievements of High Netheril. These landbound communities, while influenced by the clerics of the Netheris pantheon and possessing their own form of magic, lived in a world where the arcane was a tool for survival rather than an avenue for transcendence. The division was not only physical, but also deeply cultural and economic. High Netheril's enclaves were bastions of enlightenment and peace, where magic facilitated a life of intellectual pursuit and luxury. The commoners of Low Netheril, in contrast, were often viewed as lesser beings by their airborne counterparts, used for labor, or at times as subjects for arcane experimentation. This divide was further exacerbated by the mobility afforded to the residents of High Netheril, who could traverse vast distances with ease thanks to their magical skill, while those in Low Netheril were bound by the limitations of terrestrial travel. Despite these disparities, both regions were united under the banner of the Netherese Empire, sharing a common heritage and collective history marked by incredible achievements. The apex of Netheril's civilization was an era where magic wasn't just a tool, but the very foundation of existence for the Empire's elite. This period saw the Netherese Arcanists, through their unparalleled command of the Weave, raise not just one, but 54 enclaves into the sky, creating a panorama of floating cities that symbolized the height of their magical achievements. Each enclave, a marvel of arcane engineering, floated serenely above the lands of Faerun. The culture within these floating enclaves was as elevated as their physical location. They engaged in pursuits of art, science, and magic, furthering the empire's broader understanding. The education and refinement of these citizens was unparalleled, with access to knowledge and magical resources that were the envy of the world below. Among the enclaves, places like Jinlanal, the first to grace the skies, and Ilianar, home to the legendary Arcanist Karsus, were just a few examples of the complex cities that floated above the empire. Each enclave, unique in its contributions to Netheril's culture and magical achievements, played a crucial role in the empire's history, exploring new frontiers of arcane research and development. However, this period of greatness was not without its shadows. The reliance on the Mithalars, powerful magical engines that sustained these floating cities, hinted at a fragile foundation. The Arcanist's pursuit of power and knowledge, while pushing the boundaries of what was possible, also sowed the seeds of hubris that would eventually lead to its downfall. In stark contrast to the lofty realms, the lowlands of Netheril unfolded across the coasts of the Narrow Sea, where the everyday lives of the common folk played out. The social structure of Low Netheril was markedly different from that of its aerial counterpart, dominated not by arcanists who could bend the weave, but by individuals whose lives were entwined with the more practical aspects of magic and the land they lived on. Commoners of Low Netheril, often referred to as the Free Folk, were the backbone of Netherese society in their own right. They were the farmers, artisans, and lesser mages who cultivated the land, crafted goods, and performed the myriad of tasks necessary for the sustenance of the empire. Despite their lower social standing compared to the nobility above, the people of Low Netheril harbored a culture steeped in the traditions of the Netherese pantheon, with clerics playing a central role in community life. Life in Low Netheril was far from the magical utopia experienced by their counterparts in the sky. The common folk were heavily influenced by the whims and desires of more powerful arcanists, often finding themselves 
subjected to their experiments, or conscripted into service. The landscape of Low Netheril was dotted with domains, scattered towns, and roaming tribes, each with its own unique identity and way of life. Travel between these areas was facilitated not by roads, but by magical means, with flying steeds and spells that allowed for swift movement across the vast empire. This magic, while not as grandiose as that which powered the floating enclaves, was integral to the daily lives of the people, aiding in their labor and offering protection from the dangers that lurked beyond the borders of their settlements. Among the domains, places like Flungada stood as remnants of Netheril's reach, while the mines of Decanter showcased the empire's thirst for resources, driven by the Arcanists' endless demand for materials to fuel their magical endeavors. Even in decline, these communities continued to uphold the legacy of Netheril, their existence evidence of the empire's once vast dominion. The history of Netheril is not solely a narrative of arcane achievements and the construction of floating cities, but also a tale of strategic expansion and complex diplomacy. Throughout its zenith, the Empire of Magic extended its influence far across the lands of Faerun, engaging with neighboring realms through both conquest and cooperation. Netheril's approach to its neighbors varied. In some cases, it sought open trade and diplomatic relations, as seen with certain elven settlements, where mutual benefit outweighed the desire for dominance. In other instances, Netheril's might was asserted through military means, expanding its territory and securing resources essential for its magical and mundane needs. The Arcanists, wielding unmatched power, often took the lead in these endeavors, their decisions shaped by both the pursuit of knowledge and their pragmatism of empire building. As Netheril reached outwards, it also drew inward, integrating the diverse cultures and peoples within its expanding borders. The integration of these new territories and populations posed challenges, necessitating a balance between maintaining the core identity of the Netherese Empire and embracing the cultures brought in by its new constituents. The ascent of Netheril into the annals of Faerunian history was marked by a growing overconfidence that ultimately sowed the seeds of its downfall. As the Empire of Magic expanded its territories and delved deeper into the arcane, its leading arcanists began to entertain the dangerous ambition of rivaling the gods themselves, an ambition that would have dire consequences for both Netheril and the weave of magic that sustained the world. The Arcanists' relentless pursuit of power led them to explore realms of magic that were previously deemed unreachable or forbidden. In this era of unchecked ambition, the Arcanists ventured into experiments that tampered with the very essence of magic and life. Their endeavors were not solely for the betterment of Netheril, but often for personal aggrandizement and the demonstration of their own supremacy. This hubris was epitomized by the attempt of one arcanist, Carsus, to usurp the power of Mistral, the goddess of magic, in an event that would come to be known as Carsus' folly. Carsus' ambition was to become a deity himself, wielding control over all magic. To this end, he crafted a spell of unimaginable complexity and power, aiming to replace Mistral and become the new god of magic. However, the spell proved disastrous, leading to the unraveling of the weave and the near destruction of magic itself. Mistral, in a self-sacrificing act, managed to save the weave at the cost of her own existence, though she would later be reborn as Mistra. The aftermath of Karsa's folly was catastrophic for Netheril. Without the weave's stability, the magic that supported the floating cities failed, sending them crashing to the earth. The disaster marked the beginning of the end of the Netheril Empire, leading to its fragmentation and the dispersal of its peoples. The once great civilization fell to ruin, its cities abandoned or destroyed, and its knowledge scattered to the winds. Some, like Raumark and the people he led, found refuge in the distant lands of the Shining South, founding new realms such as Halrua. Others were guided to safety by the dwarves of Escore through the subterranean passageways to Delzun. Yet despite these pockets of survival, the empire was no more. In the aftermath, the Faerim, Netheril's ancient enemies, continued their life-draining magic, further desolating the empire's heartlands and transforming them into the barren wastes of the Anaruk Desert. This enduring blight 
serves as a grim reminder of the Empire's hubris and the perilous consequences of tampering with forces beyond our mortal comprehension. In the aftermath of the catastrophic event known as Karsus Folly, Netheril was irrevocably changed. The immediate downfall of High Netheril occurred within hours as its floating cities crashed to the ground, but the decline of Low Netheril was a more prolonged and painful process. The lands below, once vibrant with the bustle of common life and lesser magics, began a slow descent into desolation under the malevolent influence of the Faerim, aberrant creatures whose magic-draining actions accelerated the deterioration of the region. The Faerim, long enemies of the Netheril, exploited this chaos following the Empire's fall, casting spells that leached life and arcane energy from the land. The fall of the Netheril also marked the beginning of a dark chapter for those who sought to escape the immediate destruction. The enclave of Fulton Thar, having been transported to the Shadowfell by the foresight of its ruler, Telamat Tanthul, would remain there for centuries, a shadow of its former glory. The people of Fulton Thar, or the Shadowvar, as they would come to be known, bided their time in the gloom of the Shadowfell, their hearts and ambitions darkened by the plains' corrupting influence. Known as the City of Shade, the tale of Fulton Thar begins with its miraculous survival during the cataclysm that brought Netheril to its knees. Unlike its counterparts, Thultan Thar was enveloped in shadow and transported to the Shadowfell, where it remained hidden for over 1700 years. This period of exile in the realm of darkness transformed its inhabitants and their rulers, known as the Shadowvar, who were deeply influenced by Shar, the goddess of darkness, and the Shadowfell itself. The return of Thultan Thar to the prime material plane in the late 14th century of the Dale Reckoning marked a turning point in Feyrin's history. The Shadowvar sought to re-establish the dominance of Netheril and extend the reach of their dark patron across the land. Their return was a declaration of a new era for the descendants of Netheril, now steeped in the mysteries and power of the Shadow Weave, an alternative to the traditional weave of magic. Under the leadership of the Shadow Lord, Telamont Tanthul and his sons, the Princes of Shade, Thul Tanthar became the epicenter of a revived Netherese Empire. It is a stark contrast to the magicratic society of old. While still immensely powerful in the arcane arts, the Shadowar's magic was tinged with the essence of shadow, making their spells and their approach to power fundamentally different. The City of Shade itself is a marvel to behold, a floating citadel that casts a long shadow over the lands below. Its spires and towers, wrought from the darkest magics, housed a society that is both fascinating and terrifying. The Shadowvar, alongside their allies and thralls, worked tirelessly to fuse the Shadow Weave with the Weave, aiming to reshape the magical landscape of Faerun in Shar's image. The ambitions of the Shadowvar are vast, extending their influence through diplomacy, subterfuge, and outright conquest. Regions such as Sembia fell under their sway, becoming vassal states to the growing Shadow Empire. The Shadowvar's reach extended across the north, challenging the existing powers and drawing them into conflicts that would shape the future of the continent. The elite class within this society were the Shadowvar, beings who had embraced the essence of shadow to become shades. This transformation granted them considerable power and a connection to the Shadow Weave that distinguished them from the common folk of the Shadowvar Empire. Beneath the Shadowvar were the Netherese, a class comprising descendants of the original inhabitants of Netheril and those assimilated from the lands they conquered. This social structure was underpinned by a singular devotion to Shar, whose worship was enforced as the state religion. The cities of the returned Netheril were marvels of shadow and magic. The capital of the city of Shade floated above the land, a stark emblem of the empire's might and ambition. Other notable cities, like Oreme and Orofin, showcased the architectural and magical innovations that characterized this new era of Netheril. These urban centers were hubs of arcane research, military power, and governance, from which the Shadowvar protected their power across the realm. The expansion of the Shadowvar Empire was met with resistance and conflict. The Empire's assertive stance 
and the threat it posed to the balance of magic in Faerun led to confrontations with various factions and nations, most notably Cormyr and the Dale Lands. These conflicts were not merely territorial, but ideological, as the Shadowvar's reliance on shadow magic and their allegiance to Shar clashed with the prevailing magical and divine orders of the region. Despite their formidable power and the depths of their ambition, the Shadowvar's efforts to dominate Faerun ultimately led to their downfall. Their aggressive maneuvers culminated in a cataclysmic battle over Mithranor, echoing the tragic fate of ancient Netheril. This confrontation saw the destruction of Thultan Thar and a significant blow to the Shadowvar's aspirations, marking the end of their bid to reforge the Empire in the image of Shadow. The concluding chapter in the saga of the Netheril unfolded over the once hallowed grounds of Mithranor, marking a climactic end to centuries of ambition, magic, and shadow. This final conflict was not merely a battle over territory, but a struggle for the soul of magic itself, pitting the shadow-infused might of the Shadowvar against the combined forces of Faerun's defenders. The Shadow Empire of Netheril sought to extend its dominion and turned its eyes toward Mithranor, a city with a mythal of immense power. The goal was audacious, to seize this power, allowing Shar to ascend as the supreme deity of magic, supplanting Mistra. This act would have reshaped the weave and the very essence of magic across Faerun, casting it all into shadow. The battle that ensued was titanic, involving not just armies, but the fundamental forces of magic. Telamon Tanthul, leveraging the full might of the Shadowvar and their mastery of the Shadow Weave, launched a formidable assault. The defenders of Faerun, aware of the existential threat posed by the Shadowvar's ambition, rallied to protect Mithranor and the integrity of the Weave. In the midst of this chaos, the Lich Larlock, another ancient Netherese arcanist with his own designs on the Mythal, emerged as an unexpected variable. His interference, driven by a desire to absorb the Mythal's power for himself, complicated the struggle. The conflict reached its apex with the intervention of Elminster Almar, the Sage of Shadowdale. In a decisive moment, he confronted Telamont Tanthul, resulting in the Shadow Lord's demise. This act, combined with efforts of the defenders, thwarted the Shadowvar's ambitions, but at a great cost. The Shade Enclave of Fultan Thar, the last remnant of Netheril's grandeur, crashed upon Mithranor, destroying both in a great cataclysm. The story of Netheril, from its humble beginnings to its zenith and eventual downfall, is one that spans millennia, leaving an indelible impact on the very fabric of Faerun. This empire, still known in contemporary Faerun for its magicratic rule and unparalleled advancements in the arcane, set a standard for magical achievement that few could match. The legacy of Netheril endures, not just in the ruins scattered across the landscape or in the echoes of its power felt in modern magic, but in the very course of the history it helped to shape. The remnants of Netheril's greatness can be found across Toril, from the desolate expanses of the Honoric Desert, forever transformed by the Empire's rise and fall, to the scattered enclaves and domains that once epitomized the height of Netherese society. The ruins of these great cities, both those that soared in the sky and those that anchored the Empire's terrestrial might, continue to be a source of wonder, mystery, and arcane knowledge. Magically, Netheril's contributions were profound. The discovery of the Nether Scrolls and the subsequent development of Mythalars revolutionized the practice of magic. The legacy of these innovations persists, influencing contemporary arcane practices and continuing to inspire mages across Faerun. Magical artifacts from this era, such as the Eun Stones, and other quasi-magical items remain highly sought after. The shadow of Netheril, in the form of the Shadowvar, still looms over the contemporary geopolitical landscape. Their actions, in their attempts to reclaim and surpass the glory of ancient Netheril, have reshaped the political map of northern Faerun, influencing alliances, rivalries, and conflicts that continue to this day. As the echoes of Netheril's past continue to resonate through the ages, they serve as a guidepost for Faerun's future, reminding them of the impermanence of power and the enduring quest for knowledge and mastery over the arcane in the Forgotten Realms. <laughs>